Hong Kong is a place where British and Chinese cultures meet, a world of capitalist freedoms under a communist regime. Today, we will discover how these apparently incompatible things interact in real life. It is believed that Hong Kong originated when the Qing Dynasty government lost during the Opium War in 1841. At that time, it ceded the island to the United Kingdom. Kowloon, the newest territory and 234 islands, was also leased to England for 50 years. At the same time, the city's history, with its 428 square miles area, predates that of the Qing for more than 1,000 years. Since its earliest days as a British colony, this metropolis has been a center of international trade. At its peak in the early 20th century, the urban population was sustained by refugees, mostly from China. The arrival of many people from another country contributed to a new beginning for the place as a major manufacturing center, which also brought economically stimulating energy and industry to the city's identity. In the past decades, as the economic side of the country has been undergoing an openness drive, Hong Kong has been transformed again, this time towards a service-based economy. In July 1999, in line with the concept of one country, two systems, Hong Kong was recognized as a special administrative region of China. This mechanism allowed the city to enjoy the highest degree of autonomy while preserving its capitalist system. Let's start with an amazing story involving Hong Kong. But before we begin, make sure you've subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with future content. Kowloon Walled City The Kowloon Walled City is the most densely populated place known to mankind, and it deserves its own story. Before its demolition in 1994, more than 50,000 people lived in the multi-story anthill, which is equal to 5 million per square mile in standard conversion. Its monstrous forms inspired cyberpunk classics, which borrowed the aesthetics of the giant anthill to describe the overpopulated world of the future. The official government had no control over Kowloon for decades. Instead, it was ruled by triads, drugs, and prostitution. At one time, Kowloon was indeed a well-fortified fort and Chinese enclave in British Hong Kong. But since the 1930s, Beijing has lost control of the fort, and up until the 1990s, it actually became a criminal and anarchic territory ruled by the triads. The fort was inhabited by squatters and disenfranchised immigrants and covered the city with unauthorized home buildings so that the Kowloon's original outline had long been lost. The only way to guess that this muddled anthill was once a well-planned fortification is to look at the bird's eye view photo. In 1898, a convention was concluded, whereby Hong Kong and Kowloon were leased to Britain for the next 99 years under one minor condition of great consequence. The fortified fort, where the Chinese officials lived, was excluded from the lease. It continued to be a territory of the Qing Empire, forming a kind of enclave in the British colony. De jure, the fortress city was still Chinese territory, surrounded by the British colony. In fact, the laws of the Hong Kong administration did not apply here. Its inhabitants paid no taxes to anyone. Kowloon became a real black hole, a promised land for refugees from the mainland escaping the civil war in China. Hundreds and then thousands of squatters started flocking to the former fort, eventually becoming dozens of thousands of them, who took advantage of Kowloon's status to start a new life formerly in China, but in fact in Hong Kong, enjoying all of its benefits but remaining almost completely independent. All the attempts of the British administration to prevent the spontaneous constructions on a piece of land of 6.4 acres faced the resistance of the local inhabitants and the China government, which threatened a diplomatic conflict in the event of any action by the Hong Kong authorities, in the territory they considered their own. Tens of thousands of inhabitants of the fortress demonstrated miracles of survival and adaptation in an essentially anarchic society. The water supply problem was solved by digging 70 wells, from which water was pumped by electric pumps to the roofs of the buildings, and from there, through a maze of countless pipes, was sent to the consumers' apartments. Electricity was also solved. There were many employees of Hong Kong Electric among the block's residents who knew how to connect to the Hong Kong power grid illegally and help their neighbors do so. Most of the residents lived in small apartments of an average size of 247 square feet. Self-construction progressed to such an extent that the neighborhood developed a second system of passageways between buildings, parallel to the above-ground one, at a certain height from the ground. Kowloon was turning into a single whole organism, a huge communal apartment, a building city as if it had come to the present from a post-apocalyptic future. In fact, the streets inside the block didn't exist. Some passages formed such a confusing maze that an outsider who got there promptly lost his orientation in space. 
It was Kowloon that inspired William Gibson, one of the fathers of cyberpunk. Narrow streets, mind-boggling closeness, the power of triads, everyday human and drug trafficking in a world of eternal darkness and neon signs. Fiction owes it all to Kowloon. Capitalizing on the Hong Kong administration's lack of interest in the neighborhood, the triads, the clandestine criminal organizations common in pre-war China, gained real power in the city. In Kowloon, gambling houses, brothels, and opium dens flourished. It wasn't until the mid-1970s that the Hong Kong authorities, who finally decided they'd had enough and secured the approval of the Chinese government, carried out a grand series of police raids that resulted in the virtual expulsion of all organized crime groups from Kowloon. These important improvements that transformed the fortress city into a comfortable place to live had no effect on the appearance of Kowloon. The power vacuum continued, the squatter buildings proliferated, and no major repairs or even a cosmetic renovation of the facades were in sight. In 1987, the governments of Britain and China concluded an agreement regulating the status of Kowloon, considering the impending return of Hong Kong to Chinese jurisdiction 10 years later. The administration of the British colony was finally granted and right to demolish the block that had disfigured its face. Demolition began in March 1993 and was completed in April 1994. All the residents received either monetary compensation for moving or apartments in Hong Kong's sprawling modern new buildings. Still, the demolition of this anarchic relic, born almost a century ago, was accompanied by violent protests by locals who didn't want to abandon their usual way of life. However, let's go back to our familiar Hong Kong. The Hong Kong Miracle Hong Kong is the world's financial center, where the offices of many global corporations are located. While there are districts, such as the famous street with bars, Lan Kwai Fong, where you can find yourself surrounded exclusively by white English-speaking people. But in fact, ethnic Chinese make up 92% of Hong Kong's population, with Filipinos, Indonesians, Indians, and Pakistanis accounting for the remaining 8%. If you tell a native Hong Konger that he is just as Chinese as a mainlander, he will be deeply insulted. They speak two different languages, Cantonese in Hong Kong and Mandarin in mainland China. The difference in communication style and manners is especially noticeable. Hong Kongers do not yell at each other when they talk, do not push in the streets, and do not make loud noises while eating. They are reserved, talk quiet quietly, stand quietly in lines, and are generally friendly. As the leading global business and financial center, Hong Kong attracts huge numbers of people looking for a better life. Such an influx has become a truly unbearable burden for the city because there is no land left for housing construction at all. Housing prices here are cosmic, the highest in the world. The average cost of an apartment in Hong Kong is about $1.235 million, so low-income Hong Kongers and immigrants are forced to settle in conditions similar to the very same fort. The founder of Alibaba's largest store, Jack Ma, bought a mansion in Hong Kong valued at $191 million. Overpopulation, lack of land, and rising real estate prices have led to a crisis in the ritual industry as well. This is what the cemetery looks like. For many years in the 20th century, Hong Kong was the world's third largest producer of movies, after Hollywood and Bollywood. Therefore, it is not surprising to find the Avenue of the Stars in Hong Kong, the main decoration of which, of course, is the statue of Bruce Lee, next to which every tourist considers it his duty to take a photo, trying to repeat his pose. The iconic kung fu action films that originated in Hong Kong still inspire filmmakers around the world. We owe them such films as The Matrix, Kill Bill, and Kung Fu Panda. Such international celebrities as actor and director Jackie Chan, director John Woo, and actor Chow Yun-Fat all started their careers here. The British past in Hong Kong includes a right-hand drive cars, street shops, and grocery stores charged by the English pound rather than by the kilo. And most buses in Hong Kong are double-decker, even the black ones. Bus service is available 24 hours a day. With a population of more than 7.5 million people, there is very little traffic congestion on Hong Kong's roads. More than 80% of all private traffic is by public transport. The Hong Kong cable car is popular with locals and tourists alike. It's a great way to get to the highlands of the island, and the views are spectacular. English is still one of the two official languages, and to get a job in the government or financial sector, you have to be more than excellent at it. But in all other areas, Cantonese leads the way. But all the street signs are in two languages. Hong Kong has its own money. It's called Hong Kong dollar. You cannot pay in yuan here. The streets of the metropolis are full of currency exchange offices where you can exchange bills of almost all Asian countries. 
In Hong Kong, you can go out at any time of the day and feel safe because the crime rate is low due to strict penalties. Imprisonment for up to three years for driving under the influence of alcohol. Life imprisonment and a fine of 5 million Hong Kong dollars for selling drugs. Seven years and a million dollars for drug use. In Hong Kong, there's a huge gap between the poor and the rich. A person with a high wage can earn 44 times more than a simple worker. Nevertheless, the minimum wage in 2022 is $1,032 and the average is $5,541. In Hong Kong, everyone submits a declaration and pays taxes independently. Businessmen pay 16.5% and on profits under $2 million, the tax is half as much, 8.25%. Sole traders pay 15%. Employees pay a progressive rate. From the first $45,000, you pay 2%. For the next $45,000, 7%, then 12 and 17. Hong Kong is known as the city of street signs as booming commerce has generated frenzied competition, resulting in thousands upon thousands of signs, each striving to be brighter and bigger than its neighbor, with a pawn shop or optician's display as brilliant as a nightclub sign. A major feast for the eyes is Nathan Road, especially impressive at night when the neon signs light up. It was here in the 1970s that Panasonic covered an entire wall of a skyscraper with neon and entered the Guinness World Records. Hong Kong is famous for the panorama of glittering skyscrapers, numbering almost 8,000. However, if you go a little further away from the city center, you'll see national parks with pristine greenery and paradise beaches. However, beaches are much less popular here than hiking. Trekking along an elaborate route is the locals' secret and favorite weekend activity. More than 200 islands within Hong Kong offer trails of varying complexity, yet they all have breathtaking views that rival the man-made scenery of the city center. Chinese culture in Hong Kong is very important. Buildings here are constructed in accordance with the principles of Feng Shui, the Asian dragon Loon in Chinese, in contrast to the mythological creatures of Western origin, is a friendly protector, a noble and courteous creature. In the late 1980s, the Bank of China Tower, now an integral part of the cityscape, was at the center of heated controversy because its design deviated from the traditional canon. Architects were accused of undermining the island's economy because its design contradicted all Feng Shui concepts. The building had excessively pointed outlines that resembled blades made up of crosses and angles. To neutralize bad luck, the skyscraper was opened on August 8, 1988. The four eights made it the luckiest day of the century, powerful enough to ward off all bad things. The new headquarters of HSBC, one of the world's largest financial conglomerates, was built in the same neighborhood, designed by the English architect. When designing this building, a Feng Shui master was consulted to ensure the flow of positive energy. Nothing was overlooked, from the lions on guard at the entrance, symbolizing yin and yang, to the arrangement of the internal staircases following the discipline's philosophy. The longest surface escalator in the world is in Hong Kong. It leads to the middle level from the Soho district. Soho is mostly populated by wealthy expats from Europe and America. You only need to go here for two reasons. To take a break from China, and when you're hungry, the neighborhood is renowned for its bars and restaurants. The longest suspension bridge in the world, Sing Ma, is also in Hong Kong. It connects Lantau Island, where the airport is located, to the mainland. Every day, thousands of tourists come to the small village of Pai Tao to see one of Hong Kong's main attractions, the 10,000 Buddhas Monastery. In fact, the statues here are much bigger than the name implies. There are about 13,000 of them. To get to the monastery, you have to climb the 431 steps, on both sides of which there are 500 life-size statues of Buddha. The huge statue of Buddha is also worth mentioning. It is 112 feet tall and made of bronze. Now it is one of the biggest symbols of Buddhism, and festivals and ceremonies are often held near it. The city can rightfully be considered one of the cleanest in the world. There are even toilets for dogs, such as this one in the central district. It is warm here all year round. The climate is tropical. In winter, it's about 59 to 68 degrees. In summer, it can be up to as hot as 104 degrees Fahrenheit. In its scale, Hong Kong is as large as China's megacities. Certainly, the built-up areas cannot compete with the Kowloon Fortress, but their size is also impressive. Unquiet Hong Kong in early July each year, Hong Kong celebrates another anniversary of the transition of this former British colony to Chinese rule and the creation of a special administrative region within the People's Republic of China. In addition to official celebrations, the holiday has always been marked by an opposition procession in support of democratic reforms. 
At the same time, the very existence of organized opposition in Hong Kong can be called an anomaly. Neither Britain nor the People's Republic of China were interested in the development of civil society in this territory. However, its development was not strongly hindered until a certain point. Both countries needed the city to perform one specific function, to be an international trade and financial center, and this needed political stability. When China took over Hong Kong, but the British influence on Hong Kong was still strong, the Chinese government generously sponsored the regions by providing incentives for business. Under such conditions, Hong Kong residents enjoyed the same prosperous life as before, and there was no reason for the disturbance. But over time, major Chinese cities in the neighborhood, such as Shenzhen and Guangzhou, started to win out in competition with Hong Kong, and the standard of living on the peninsula dropped. This was one of the main reasons for the numerous projects in Hong Kong. Usually, the opposition marches in July were unopposed by the police and ended without much fuss. The tradition was first broken at the height of the protest against the extradition bill. In 2019, protesters were able to besiege and break into the government compound that houses the Legislative Council. The next year, there was no such opportunity. The police refused to approve the marches, citing restrictions due to the epidemic. And the day before the march, the People's Republic of China passed a new national security law, which went into effect on the same day and increased responsibility for such crimes to life imprisonment. The unsanctioned rallies on July 1, 2020 against the new law ended in mass arrest and the first criminal cases for its violations. But the rioting continued further. The protesters even learned how to fight tear gas with this ingenuous method. By 2021, the march was leaderless as opposition leader Figo Chan was detained and convicted in May for holding unsanctioned rallies. He's now serving an 18-month prison sentence. Once the opposition had been decapitated, Beijing took the initiative and proceeded to dismantle Hong Kong's autonomy in a sustained manner. Today, the central government in Beijing is more and more directly involved in Hong Kong affairs. The most important Hong Kong laws of recent years were not passed in Hong Kong, but in Beijing. This doesn't contradict the basic law of Hong Kong. It gives China the right to extend nationwide laws to the city. Such changes make Hong Kong less attractive to live in. So emigration from the city has become quite widespread. But Hong Kongers are not allowed to leave in peace either. In response to a proposal by the British government to provide emigrants from the island with British citizenship under a facilitated scheme, the Chinese authorities said they would simply stop recognizing such passports. This is what Hong Kong is like. Rich in history, beautiful, densely populated, expensive to live in, and insanely interesting. We're curious to hear your opinion about this video in the comments. At this point, we get to the end of our video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon and give this video a big thumbs up.